Now you might be sitting there and you might be thinking, what exactly can I do right now to improve my gameplay in Root, the board game? This is my favorite game of all time and I have played it you know, hundreds and hundreds of times. I, I have studied this game, okay? And I've thought about it. I'm, I've thought, what are the five tips that I want to give a player that can work no matter what faction they're playing, no matter what map they're on, what are some smart pieces of advice that I can give those players? So I've got five tips for you and please stay till the end because this fifth tip is going to be so extraordinarily important. It's probably the most important one. So definitely stay till the end. Table talk is a real game mechanic in Root, and it is extremely important in Root. At many, many opportunities, in order to kind of find your success in this game, you do need to try and make deals or try to sway the table away from attacking you at some point. This is something that is extremely important and something that you want to practice at, at getting better at. A lot of people say to not really say this one because this one is kind of one of those things that you can't really teach somebody. But I do find that actually watching competitive matches, watching games of other players and listening to kind of some of the table talk that they use, that is going to really help you become a better player at this game. For example, if you're the Riverfolk company, reminding players every single turn at the beginning of their turn, what they can do with your services or what they can do with the cards that you have for sale. This is a huge important concept for the Riverfolk, but there's also a really, really important concept of being the Woodland Alliance and kind of table talking players away from attacking you or attacking you either or you can kind of try to sway the conversation whichever one you want. Table talk is huge in Root and it's something that I think you get better at as you go and as you play the game but I think just knowing that it is an important concept in the game is important and so that is going to be the first tip that I have for you. Cards are so extremely important, they actually represent the denizens of the forest. And so, in a way, a large hand of cards literally means that you are popular in the forest or that those are kind of like your followers or the, the animals and critters that are currently kind of campaigning for you. And so the more that you have in general, the more powerful you are as a faction. And it's kind of interesting because one thing that you'll notice is that some factions have less good card draw and some factions have more good card draw, but any opportunity to draw more cards is going to improve your gameplay greatly. And this matters because you have a higher chance of having ambush cards in your hand, or you might also have item cards. So even if you don't have the capability to craft them, you having the physical card within your hand denies other players from possibly crafting it. Um, and it also gives you an increased opportunity to craft more cards. Having a lot of cards in your hand and gaining those cards is so important. So I advise that whatever faction you're playing right now, whatever faction you're into, try to look at the way that they gain card draw. And usually that's going to be your first step in trying to get better with that faction is how do I get some more card draw really, really quickly. As my third tip, I want to talk about the fact that the leader in victory points is almost not always and often not the leader in the actual game. And if an entire table spends their time bashing the person who has the most victory points to oblivion and basically banishing them to the shadow realm, making sure that they cannot come back in the game. This will often result in the player that was in second place winning really, really easily or possibly giving another faction uh, just a huge boon and benefit from having that faction just completely out of the game. So instead of just attacking the leader, look at both the first place and the second place positions. And instead of the entire table attacking the player in the lead, perhaps one or two players attack the player in the lead and you yourself or another player attacks that second place player to make sure that they don't get too much of a benefit or too much of a jump uh, in table presence because you just destroyed the first place player. And speaking of attacking the leader and attacking in general, Root is such an interesting game and it's very unlike war games in this, in that 
Battling is not always the correct answer to stop a player. For example, if you're playing against the Woodland Alliance, sometimes battling them just feeds their engine even more. And so you have to know exactly how to check or attack an opponent to actually harm them and slow down their victory point process. And oftentimes for many factions, taking out their warriors is not the way to do that. Taking out warriors, sure, it can help, but it's gonna hurt players like the Riverfull Company a lot more and maybe the Underground Duchy a lot more. And so what I would do is I would recommend looking at what are the ways a faction scores points and how can I stop them from scoring points. Sometimes it's just by stopping their ability to spread economically. Like for the Marquise de Cat, oftentimes it's not destroying all of their buildings because as you destroy their buildings, they're able to replace those building spots with new buildings, gaining more victory points. So instead, you might just want to build buildings and clearings surrounding their stuff in order to prevent them from spreading and making them have to come and attack you in order to get more building spots. See, Root is so much more than just a war game. It is a whole ecosystem of strategy where you need to figure out exactly how to slow down each different faction's progress to win the game. My actual last tip is going to be that Root is a fragile game. And what I mean by that is that Oftentimes players will say that the game is unbalanced and I actually agree, the game is not perfectly balanced. The game is balanced by those players at the table. The game itself and the mechanics, you can kind of look at one faction and look at another and sometimes one faction will be able to just zoom up the map if they were just not touched at all and another faction might struggle a lot like the Lizard Cult. They might not be able to just keep up with other factions if there was just no attacking at all, there was just no checking at all. And so because of that, this is a fragile game design and the perfect way to kind of give an example of why this information matters so much for you if you're trying to get better at this game uh, is the example of the, uh, let's just say we have the base game, we have the Eerie, we have the Woodland Alliance, we have the Marquise the Cat, and we have the Vagabond in the game. We have these four factions and the first turn of the game, the Vagabond player um, wants to take out the keep of the Marquise the Cat, and so they do. Sure, the Vagabond might be able to actually pull that off. This is a completely valid thing that happens sometimes in this game. And if they do pull that off, they might end their first or second turn with five or six victory points, let's just say. And a lot of players that don't know the game of Root might say, wow, what a great first move, what a strategic option, what a uh, brilliant, brilliant play. But as you get more experienced in this game, you find that that is actually not a good move, that that is actually terrible. And the reason for it is because that Vagabond player will not win the game, very likely will not win the game if they do this. In fact, it will make the game miserable for the Marquise the Cat because the Marquise now doesn't have a way to win the game. But it also kind of closes out the capability for the Vagabond to win the game because their entire board is going to be extra boots to move around because now they're hostile with the Marquise de Cat. And now the Eerie Dynasties will actually be able to just swoop because the Marquise de Cat has really no power on power and no way to kind of gain strength throughout the game. And so it's very, very likely that in this scenario, the Woodland Alliance or the Eerie Dynasty will win the game and not the Vagabond who gets five or six points at the beginning of the game. Root Mastery is about learning when to be selfish and when not to be. Now, just as something to kind of tag along at the end of the video here, I would definitely highly recommend you check out my other strategy tip guides for the factions of Root because learning all of the factions and sides of the game is going to improve your gameplay substantially. Playing every faction at least once or twice is super, super important and learning how they gain points and also what hurts them is just as important to become better at the game. So I have links to those right here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Tip 5.5, don't forget to hit the Vagabond. Remember to hit that Vagabond. Grab the Vagabond by the tail, swing it around a couple of times, and throw it into the river. Be sure to smack the Vagabond. Put the Vagabond in a box, grab a hammer, and smash the box. Remember to send that Vagabond to the forest. 
You don't want the Vagabond to just run away with the game. Trust me. <laughs>